Hello and welcome to the VPI Outcomes video. I'm Bob Washington and I serve in the Office of Project Development and Environmental Review in the Federal Highway Administration. I also serve as a co-chair of the Everyday Count VPI initiative. Virtual Public Involvement, or VPI, is a set of engagement tools that expands the reach of transportation agencies beyond in-person engagement. These innovative tools, which work best when combined with in-person outreach, are designed to engage with a broader population, remove barriers to engagement, and make public involvement more accessible, convenient, and affordable. Virtual public involvement allows agencies to meet the public where they are. In this video, state DOTs, MPOs, and members of the public will share their experience and benefits of using VPI. I'm the planning manager for the Public Works and Mobility Department at the City of Missoula. We've really more or less institutionalized how we use VPI, so we're using it on every project now as a standard tool because we know that it can reach a lot of people. It gives us a lot more flexibility in how we conduct outreach. I am the Public Involvement, Community Studies, and Visualization Group Leader. And I'm a Senior Public Involvement Officer for the North Carolina Department of Transportation. Our first tools really were the online engagement tools. Uh, since then, we've added project informational videos. My role here is to represent the NJTPA at partner agency uh, meetings, uh, conferences, and other events. We're continuing to use VPI because we found that it's a way for us to reach more people and uh, also to be more flexible and nimble as far as where, when, and how we conduct our outreach. I am the Public Information Officer for the Southwest Ohio region. By being able to have these virtual public involvement meetings, we are able to have people come to the table and share comments and share their opinions and view uh, different renderings. A lot of times that's people that wouldn't normally uh, come to an in-person meeting. using our information on geolocations and things that we're seeing responses come from areas that we typically wouldn't get responses from or we might get minimal responses from. The older demographic, you know, uh, 64 and older, we've seen probably a 13% increase in, in their participation. By using virtual engagement, we've broken down those barriers by providing the opportunity to watch our videos, uh, read our websites, and those websites could be in various languages depending on what they need. They're translated at this point on one of our platforms by Google Translate. We've used uh, virtual engagement, you know, online meetings. It's it's much easier to say, for instance, close caption those meetings than it is to have um, you know someone doing sign language. Um, and so that's really, I think, opened up the accessibility of our public engagement in ways that we haven't done in the past or, or were more challenging to do. So we're able to meet people where they're at. People can sort of absorb the information at their own pace, which is really nice. So people don't have to go out to a meeting. They have more opportunity and longer time frames to really absorb the information, provide that feedback, think about it, um, and, and have more of a two-way communication with us. It has really been a game changer because you have people who wouldn't normally go to an in-person meeting. This way they can just pull it up online and if they need to zoom in on something, they can do that as well. Um, they have the freedom with our open house way of doing things to go in and look at things and then maybe you know, log off, think about it for a while, and then go back in and leave comments. I don't think it would be possible for the NJTPA to have total engagements um, for a long range plan north of 33,000 people if we were 100% in person. VPI enabled us to reach far more people in a five to six month time span than we ever could have done in person. I think that VPI and in person go really well together and I think the VPI almost empowers people to get involved. Uh, I saw that 
uh, when I would send out emails to get people to do surveys and they would respond, you know, in the dozens or more um, right away because they felt like, hey, my voice is being heard and I've got an easy channel to, to provide my input. People want to feel that their uh, input is valued and that it will be translated into actual uh, implementation plans. And I think the approach that NJTPA took in this session and their outreach made people feel like that their input was valued. Having VPI, having virtual opportunities for their participation makes it, we have found, makes it much easier for a larger group of people to participate. There are people who don't like to speak in a meeting. If you look at the chats for some of these sessions, there's a lot of comments. So the side conversations that can go on in a virtual platform really, I think, enhance um, the verbal interactions that are also happening in a virtual platform. One of the other things that people really loved about the virtual public involvement process was that the, the tools and the platforms allowed people to really engage with images of the project and the concepts. Not only do I think that the VPI process helped increase confidence in the pedestrian bridge project itself, I honestly think it increased confidence in ODOT's engagement with the community in general. For our Higgins Avenue corridor study, um, we put out an, uh, a survey through a number of different sources. People would pick that up, share it through their social media networks. I think over 700 survey responses, which is huge for a community of, of our size. 2017, we held two meetings, in-person open house meetings, and we sent out approximately 5,100 postcards. At the two meetings, we had one with about 367 people and the other one had about um, 321 people. We're looking at around 700 out of 5,000. However, our webpage received over 29,000 views. We had over 8,000 participants and 1,200 people commented and signed up for uh, updates on the project for Plan 2050, our most recent long-range transportation plan. Uh, you know, 2,100 plus survey responses. It's all virtual. Uh, 23 public meetings with over 500 attendees. Uh, four TPA Tuesday symposia. 350 almost participants in those. This is all virtual. And of course, social media uh, involvement, which is important. Five different channels, 30,000 plus direct engagements. Instead of, say, spending 30 or 40 hours putting on a public open house where you get 30 people to show up, um, we could spend those 40 hours in reaching out, spending an hour with each organization virtually or sending them the information that they can share during their, their existing meetings. Um, and so the time per participant is much better um, and it allows our staff to sort of build those relationships and have those contacts and be able to collect um, additional information from the, the public. Without all that travel time that we would spend driving back and forth to all 100 counties in North Carolina, provides us more opportunity, more time to concentrate on things we need to. It's more efficient, more effective for us. Um, it's a better use of our manpower. Comments oh. after a public meeting or a public hearing uh, not only saves us staff time, but it saves the consultant staff time as well, which saves the yes. taxpayer money, right? You can explore these agencies' use of VPI and more at the VPI website. The website houses all of the resources developed during the VPI initiative, including 15 webinars, eight peer exchanges, 24 case study videos, and 18 fact sheets. The site's VPI toolkit provides dozens of examples of how states, MPOs, and local agencies are using innovative VPI tools in their public involvement work.